Now let's talk about color. So we excluded this when we were talking about the visual variables because I wanted to focus specifically on color uh, in this video. I'm here to tell you that color is actually made up of three visual variables, hue, lightness, and saturation. Hue is often what we think of when we think of color. These are the names of colors that we learn when we're kids, like blue, orange, yellow, and green. Lightness is how light or dark the color is. Here they're showing light green, medium green, and dark green. In black and white, this would be light gray, dark gray, and medium gray. Finally, saturation is perhaps the hardest to understand. Saturation is the intensity of the color. For instance, are you, really, are you a really vivid red or a mu more muted red? This one is really hard to understand. So let's talk about it in comparison to lightness. Lightness is your darkest color to your lightest color. So red here is a really intense dark red that goes to pink and then eventually white. Saturation on the other hand starts with a really intense and vivid red and gets more and more muted until it's almost gray. Saturation is often used without used with lightness or hue. So that's why we don't really think about it very much because it's kind of used in conjunction with lightness and with hue. If you're picking out colors to paint your walls in your apartment or house, you might not want to go with these super intense colors, but you may want something that's a little bit more muted, right? So that it's not so intense. In cartography, we don't use saturation really on its own, it's up to really kind of bring attention to something, right? A really bright, dark red is much more eye-popping than, say, a more muted red. So we need to talk a little bit about color schemes. If we back away from the visual variables of color, we have to think about color as something that is used to represent data on our map and not thinking about the individual color, but the whole color scheme and what that means. When showing data that's ordinal, interval, or ratio, it's best to use a sequential color scheme. These are color schemes that go from light to dark and are best for showing when there's more of something here and less of some variable here. Although these color schemes generally use the variable of lightness going from light to dark, you can see that you can even have multi-hue color schemes. This is technically a multi-hue color scheme. There's a little bit of blue here. It's kind of going from actually a really light blue to a dark green, but it's a little hard to see that. So let's look at a more obvious one. This map uses kind of a light yellow, goes through green and then ends up a dark blue. This still implies order, right? So the goal of a sequential color scheme here is to imply order. Here, there are more cases of some disease. Here, there are less. Here, there are a medium amount.
Next, we have diverging color schemes. These are good for, your, for when your data is also ordinal, interval, and ratio, but also when it has a meaningful midpoint. So here in this color scheme, you can see that it kind of starts in the middle as a really light color of both color, both hues that we see. So we have a brown hue and we have a green hue. And at the middle, we diverge to go brown in one direction to green in the other. These are really helpful for showing difference, right? Maybe these counties are, are more drought, uh, drought type counties, and these counties are very wet. What is a meaningful midpoint? Well, for instance, in this map, we have counties that gained people. So this is from the US Census, and we have counties that lost people. So the counties that gained people are everything from where there's no difference to where there's a positive increase. And places that lost people go from where there's no difference as your meaningful midpoint to a serious loss in numbers of people. Finally, we have qualitative color schemes. These are used, uh, used just hue. So pink, blue, yellow, orange, purple, and green to show difference. My favorite thing to show difference for is thinking about preferences that people might have. These people like strawberry ice cream. These people like black raspberry ice cream. And these people like French vanilla ice cream. Vanilla, despite my arguments, is not more or less than strawberry. It's just different. So it makes sense to use different colors to represent those differences. Here's an example from the US Census again, showing uh, minority groups with, it, with the highest percentage of county population. So basically they took out white and they look for kind of what is the next uh, most common uh, minority group in, this er in these areas. So we can see that there's some patterns here, right? That Hispanic uh, Americans tend to be um, in the Southwest and even um, up here in most of the Northwest, while American Indians and Alaskan Natives are often um, in the upper Midwest and upper plains. Black Americans are often found in the um, South here as the largest minority group after white. And here we're just showing difference, right? So we just use hue, green, purple, yellow, blue, right, to show those minority differences. One thing you will notice is that they do not use the colors that we often associate with these races to represent them on the map. And I seriously suggest that you uh, follow their example of not using uh, the colors that we associate with races to represent your data on maps. It's not uh, looked upon very highly at all. Compare that map to this choroplast map, uh, which uses saturation and lightness to show a greater percentage of the county population is Japanese. So real quick, these types of maps are called choroplast maps and um, they can be qualitative data, just showing difference nominal data, or they can be uh, nominal or ordinal interval and ratio data um, and and use a sequential color scheme. A choroplast map is when you represent an enumeration unit, in this case that's counties, but it might be states, um, by a color that's based on a variable. 